Hi everyone and welcome to episode 5 in our item inspection system series. In this episode we're taking what we've currently got which is the basic the functionality of the game uh, with the item being picked up, inspected on, moved about and returned to the hand and dropped. Um, we're now going to work on creating the UI elements required for this system to actually look useful. So the thing we're going to start off today with is the heads up display UI and the bottom text that appears indicating what item you're currently looking at. So the way this works is we're going to create a folder first of all called UI and inside this folder I'm going to add a new widget blueprint and we call this one heads up display and I'm going to open this up and this is going to be the main heads up display for the game and part of that is going to be this bottom instructional text down here so what I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to design it so I'm going to drag a border in and the border wires I'm going to anchor it to the bottom um, and what I'll do then is reset the position to 0, 0 the alignment to 0 0.5 0.5 so what that basically does is you can see here it lines it perfectly on to the center of the anchor and can be in this sort of flower shape here and after that we can then position it in the Y a little bit more higher up we'll go minus 150 to get the position exactly where we want our bottom text to appear I'm then going to click on our brush color and I'm going to choose a dark grey with an alpha of 0.8 drag it to the top here, store it and inside this border we're going to drag some text into it and this text is going to be the text that is going to change based on whatever you're looking at so I'll call it placeholder text try it again, placeholder text like so. On the border here I'm going to click size to content and if you want you can go into justification here center align it and center align it in the actual slot itself at the top. Um, I'm also going to put some padding around this so I'm going to change the padding here to be uh, let's change the uh, left to be 10 and then comma 30 Actually, no, do the other way around. Let's do 30, comma 10. That's it. Cool. Okay, so there's our bottom text there. And so I'm going to just name these slots. Uh, mostly I'm going to change the text here, so I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to name this one um, um, message text. And tick is variable. Because that's going to be changing, so I'm going to make sure that's variable. We also want to make the border variable too, because this thing will be hidden and shown uh, throughout the game. So we can go message box and make it a variable with a tick box. So we're now going to make it so this adds to the screen, and I'm going to do that in my game mode. Now I'm using the first person blueprint, so I can use the first person game mode. And I can in here go begin play. create widget and choose a heads up display I'm now going to promote that to a variable and then add that to the screen add that to the viewport compile and that's all we have to do in the game mode so it's going to create the widget we're going to store it as a value a variable and then we're going to take it to render it to the screen. So now if I push play, you'll see that bottom holder text there showing uh, just the placeholder text. Next, we're going to make a function that makes that text appear, disappear, and also change the text inside of it. So back on our heads up display, we're going to go to the graph and we create a new function called update message. And the message is going to have one input. So click on the inputs in the bottom left, add a new one, and say text to display. And we can make that a text variable. So first thing we do is we're going to check whether or not text to display is 
actually a value or not. The reason why we're doing this is because if we send a update message function uh, call to this and it has no text in it, we're going to tell it to hide the message. Okay, so text to display, we can then go it's equal to equals. And here we'll go uh, uh, make literal text and leave it as blank. So if the text display is equal to blank, it'll go true. If it's not, it'll go false. So we're going to do the false value first. And so on there, if it is false, ID, there is a value inside that text display parameter. We're going to tell the message text here to set, oh no, sorry, set, get, and then set text. To be equal to that text to display. And we're also going to tell our message box to be visible. So we've got that out, set visibility, and set to visible. Now we want to also return a value. So I'm going to click on my update message route here, go down to output, add new output, and it's going to be called is visible. And oh, what's happening there? Visible. And this will be a Boolean. So we can return whether or not it, this currently is visible or not, which could be quite handy down the line. And that's obviously going to be ticked true because we're making it visible here. So we're checking the electrical text. And if it's, nothing, if it's not nothing, we're going to set that value in the text and tell it to be visible. Now, if it's true and it is equal to nothing, but there's two things we need to do. Is first of all check we're holding an item, uh, or if we're not holding an item. If we're holding an item, we want it to say and give instructions to drop or inspect the item. Um, otherwise, we want it to change based on whatever we want it to be. So to do that, we need to first of all get the player character. Now the best way of doing that is going into your event graph and the event construct get player character and cast that to the first person character, storing the result as a variable. And we'll call it player character. So now we've got a reference to the player, a direct reference, meaning we can go to update message here, drag the player character out, choose get, and from here we're going to get the item being held. Get high, uh, currently, item, currently held item, right click on that and convert to validated get. And as I've described before, that they get just checks whether or not the value is uh, has a value to it, a variable has a value to it, um, i.e. if we're, are we holding an item or we're not holding an item in this case. So if we're not holding an item, we're going to tell it to um, disappear the box. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this visibility text box here. And if it's not valid, we can actually just plug in that there bit neater and make it hidden so now it's going to hide the message box if we have no te uh, no text being sent to it and no item being held we can then return here and untick is variable it is visible then we're going to go to is valid so if it is valid we're going to get the currently held item and change what text we want to show so the text is going to show push e to inspect or push in this case, R to drop. So we're going to take this stuff here and paste it at the top here. And the text we're going to show is going to come from a format text box. So the format text, let me just move this along, it's going to say press E to inspect. And we'll actually put in the name of this thing. So to put in the name of the exact thing, we're going to do name. And then we're going to go shift enter to make a new line. Press F to drop the item. So now we've got this name variable plugged in. The name's going to come from our 
currently held item and I can't remember if we added the item name but let's have a look uh, no so let's add it so it's the item name and this will be a text and whilst we're here we can also do the item description you put in whatever values you want it to show okay um, the default item name we're going to make it say parent item okay on the head up display back on there we're going to get the currently held item from this uh, bad date get and we're going to get the item name and that's going to be plugged into our name there so we're going to set the text to be this and make it visible and then lastly we're going to get that return node to be over here too okay and then on the event graph at the start, we're going to call that update message there and leave it blank. Okay, so that's the function set up. We'll go through it quickly. Uh, so the function is going to take a parameter called text to display. First thing to do is check what that text is. If that is nothing in that parameter, it's going to go down here, change. Um, so if it's not nothing, it actually is something there. We're going to change the text to be whatever we typed in and change the visibility of the message box to be visible. If there is nothing in it, we're going to check if we currently hold an item. If we are currently holding an item, we're going to give instructions to uh, how to control the item. And uh, if we're not controlling an item, currently holding an item, it'll make it hidden uh, away from the player. Okay, so that'll do from that. So let's actually show this working in practice. So on my item parent, I'm going to look for my look at uh, function, which we set up. Uh, which is over here and over here I'm going to get hold of that head of display and tell it to update that message so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to utilize this player character so I'm going to go into my player character and on begin play for this thing we're going to get the game mode and cast to the first person game mode which is the game mode we put that um, widget on and here we can get the heads up display that's why we had to promote it to a variable and I'm going to promote that to a variable here on the player character so I'm going to go cut it compile and that means when I go to my item parent I can drag from player character here get HUD and then from that go update message and my text display is going to be a format text box because I'm going to insert the name of the item itself into it so I'm going to say press E to pick up and then the item name so curly brackets name close curly brackets and drag your name into it Hit compile. So I see that working in practice. Push play. And I've look at it, you'll see it says press E to pick up parent item. Okay? So if I look away, you'll see it still remains on the screen. So to get to hide away from the player, we're going to go into our first person character and go to our check look at uh, a function that we made way back when in the first episode. And in here, after we set this uh, to false. So if we're not looking at a currently interactable item, we can go down to false and we're going to do that, get that HUD and do that update UI, update message, sorry. Function there. I'm going to leave it blank. And remember, because it's blank, it should go invisible. So go down there, look at it, look away, look at it, look away, and you'll see it just works. So next we're going to do it. So when we're holding the item, it changes to the ob uh, to the text. So well, actually, it should be automatically. Uh, let's double check that. And there you go. You can see it should be automatically done. No, let's do that. You'll also find that if you pick up the item. You'll also find if you pick up the item, 
you can see it changes the text press E to inspect parent object or oh, push F to drop the item appears and if I drop the item oh, not F is R in my case so just change that text so go to the UI just change that quickly oh. and R there and there we have a functioning message system for our item. And that will work for all interactable objects. Um, so when we make doors in the later episode, you'll see a door work with the key. We can make the door update that message just the same as well. So it's a really fluid system, and really simple to set up. Thanks very much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go and add the inspection screen where we give instructions of how to control the item in the inspection mode as well as the item description itself. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video and want we'll to see the next part right now, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Rylaley, where a donation of just $1 will get access to that video and much, much more. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons for your continuous support. If you would like to support me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and match, smash that like button there next to the video. And if you have any suggestions for what stuff you'd like to see, don't forget to leave a comment below. Thanks again and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.